everybody. Welcome to BTTV. I'm your host, Bobby J. Um, I want you all to take a quick second and put on your deep space exploration gear because today's program is going to be out of this world. We have videos by Kevlar, Mallory Run, and Battalion of Cloud Ships. We're going to be featuring the animation art of Ryan Rosenthal. We'll have some show recaps by the Captain's Press and Aftermarket's Records. There's an interview done by Lamorville Campbell. I think it's uh, very insightful. I think you're going to dig it. And then we have a couple documentaries, one by Miranda Newcomer about stick and poke tattoos, and another one I thought it would be appropriate to start the show off with by my friend Kyle Myers. It's about basement transmissions and what goes on down at the venue here in town. Um, I think you should enjoy everything we got for you today. I know that I enjoyed putting it together, and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as me. So stick around for more BT TV coming right up. Basement Transmissions has really changed since when it started. It usually just started out with just a bunch of bands kind of clinging on to a place where we could all get together. Particularly the uh, teenage bands because we didn't really have a place to go. But now it really kind of developed much into more than just a bunch of kids just, uh, just hanging out. And it really is like a big old family. Basement transmission. Basement, basement transmission. Basement transmission. Transmissions in a basement. Basement, basement transmissions. Basement transmissions. Basement transmissions. Basement transmissions. Basement transmissions. Basement transmissions. Base. Basement transmission. Basement transmission. Basement transmission. Basement transmission. Basement transmission. Yes. <laughs> I started back at Basement Transmissions in September of 2011. I was in a band called Stage Five at the time, and we played a couple of the first shows back at Basement Transmissions when it first opened up on State Street. started playing shows at Basement Transmissions in my very first band. Basement Transmissions has given me the opportunity to be in some of my first bands. It's just given us a lot of opportunities to play so many amazing shows. My band's first gig, actually. One thing that's really striking about Basement Transmissions is the sense of community. I feel at home here. It's really a second home for me. Very accepting and kind. I just felt like this scene was a lot more welcoming than other scenes I've been in. I think it's a great first place for bands to get started. Like you can just tell it's an escape for a lot of people. I don't even remember who was playing, but I remember it was at the old BT, and I had a blast. It was so awesome, and I've been coming here ever since. And after our first show, I started meeting more people from all of these different bands, and I mean, I'm an introvert by nature. I don't really make friends that easily. I'm really shy, and I became like permanent friends with so many of these people so quickly, which made this place really special for me. And even for me personally, I've been a guitarist for 10 years and just recently started playing drums in a band and everybody's been so great with, you know, sort of warming up to me with that. And I don't know if I would have been able to do that in any other kind of venue. <laughs> Like, you know that they might, like, hate going to school because people look at them weird or something. Like, I, people always look at me weird, man. Like, I don't know, but, uh, you always go in, <laughs> you always go into, uh, BT, and no one really judges you for anything, man. It's just really cool because not very many places you can say that. 
Bobby is just a genuinely good person. And he's not only been encouraging to us as musicians, but us as like a fan. Bob is such a bright and colorful character that a lot of people have come to love in Erie and especially music scene. I would always see this guy with a walker. And I always thought he was just a guy that really liked music, but he was actually the uh, owner. Um, I just want to say thank you to Bobby for allowing me to pursue a dream of mine and put on my own show. That was Bobby. The dude is like a second father to like everybody that comes here, man. He's uh, he's one of my favorite people on the planet, like literally. Like, and Bobby James, his heart is so huge. Like you could talk to him about anything, and he would. I mean, I, I owe him a lot for getting my music career off the ground. And his fiance, Jordan Walker, and their beautiful baby Zamora, they are such a perfect family. He is a very important person in my life. I would consider him one of my best friends in the whole world.
Come check out Basement Transmissions, Erie PA's premier all-ages music venue. Featuring a diverse selection of local and national live music. Located at 145 West 11th Street, in the heart of downtown Erie. For booking and event schedules, visit us on Facebook or at www.basementtransmissions.com. Basement Transmissions, transmitting live music from the basement up. Basement Transmissions is a drug-free, alcohol-free environment.
So, um, my name is Kevin Reed, and recently I've gotten, I've taken up a kind of odd hobby, and it's uh, tattooing myself. I really enjoy tattoos. I think they're beautiful and very artistic and show a lot about a person. And very recently, about actually last year, I had a friend who told me about uh, stick and poke tattoos. Very easy and manageable, like all the supplies are really cheap. Besides the fact that you're giving yourself a little scar, I mean, there's, it's not that harmful or dangerous. So I've thought about it for like a really long time. And I mean, I always said I was going to do it, but I never really made the effort. I think it was about a week previous that I actually went and got the stuff. So it was just like sitting on my desk, just like looking at me saying like, hey, Kevin, tattoo me. So I uh, decided to just do it one night and the process is pretty simple. I mean, you take a sewing needle. You can't use a sewing machine needle because they're like a little bit more dull because they're used by a machine. So you have to get like an actual sewing needle and you stick it into the end of a pencil and that like kind of like serves as your gun for you to hold. And then you take like, I don't know, like a bottle cap or something to put ink in and you use uh, this special kind of ink. It's actually for calligraphy, but it's called India ink. It's basically just tattoo ink with a different name. It's cheaper. Tattoo ink's more expensive when you like actually buy the name brand stuff. First, you have to shave your, the area of your leg, or I mean, I do it on my leg, but you have to shave the area of your body where you're doing because you don't want like hairs to interfere with what you're doing. And then um, you have to, after that, you know, like wipe it down with rubbing alcohol. You know, it's nice to wipe the needle with rubbing alcohol. Don't burn it. That actually makes the needle more. It puts like bacteria or something on it. And then you take the little, your little tattoo gun that you've made and you dip it in the ink and you have a stencil drawn on where you want, it to do, want to do it and you just start poking. It takes like a long time because you have to keep dipping it in ink and you also are kind of like blinded by the ink on your skin so you kind of just have to feel it out and like hope you're putting it like those dots in the right spot. I mean like one little stray dot doesn't really look bad. It's just like if you accidentally put like maybe let's say 20 or 25 stray dots in an area that you're not supposed to, it's going to start showing up. Because like the process of it is, is like you're just literally giving yourself little piercings, not even that deep, probably just like a millimeter or so deep in your skin. It doesn't even honestly hurt that bad. And what you're doing is you're just like, get put, when you put that in there, it's just like it leaves a little bit of the ink in there and you just keep doing it in the spot and it concentrates and makes a picture. One day I woke up, ain't got no draws on Still feeling sleepy, but I've been eight hours gone mm. I'll check my phone now, for new messages It's all from you out, it can't get better than this mm. Fast forward in time tell you I love your country no more communism no rules of any kind really I'm filling my suitcase with steroids and art from ancient Mesopotamia ran over an old woman yesterday best vacation I've ever had and 
Hey y'all, it is Lamar Viel, the goddess of love, and I am here today at Basement Transmissions in Erie, Pennsylvania, getting ready to interview somebody who has been a very big buzz around town lately, a national touring artist, Miss Whitney Payton. So, Whitney, yes. why don't you just first off start off by telling the audience, telling the fans a little bit about yourself, you know, what's, what has been going on behind the scenes with Whitney? I'm actually really excited to be here because I keep forgetting Erie is still part of Pennsylvania because I'm from around the Philly area. Okay. So I'm in my home state right now. Yes, you are. And it's my You're first here. time ever performing in Erie, okay. let alone headlining in Erie. So I'm a little nervous. I'm really excited. Um, I've been touring everywhere nationally. I've even toured in Canada. I just recently had a new album drop, and it's my first time really stepping into the spotlight as a headlining artist. Uh, so I'm excited to be here, and it's it's cool to be in my home state, the Keystone State, and be able to kind of represent represent everywhere everywhere we go yeah, I dig it I dig it so um now, so this is your first time being a headliner now what have you done as far as opening wise like who have you performed with in the past that's kind of gotten you prepared to this point now that's true. I'm, I'm very happy for them because I think they did mold me into a better performer. Being able to see the greatest artists, I mean, you kind of can't help but pick something up from them. I've uh, toured with 3-6 Mafia. I've toured with uh, Cottonmouth Kings. I've done shows with DMX, Vanilla Ice. Uh, it, it just really goes on. Uh, Joelle Santana. It's it's the list is there. So it's it's kind of like now to headline. I almost have big shoes to fill because I've seen some of the best artists do it. And I'm like, do I have what it takes to now step to the level that they're on uh, performing like them? So I'm just trying to uh, give it my all every night I and it. it's tiring, but amazing. So worth it. So. So here we are. So um, for your openers for the night, one of which is a very young individual, his name is Young Scala. You said that you actually heard a little bit about him before you even showed up here. Like, how does that make you feel knowing that you have somebody so young opening for you on stage for your one of your first time being uh, a headliner? Does it make you want to kind of show them the love that you received when you were opening for some of these big time acts? Or Of course. Know? I mean... I think it's crazy because I think at that young of an age, I didn't build up the courage yet to step on stage. I really had to get the confidence. It took me a while. I'm really kind of socially awkward sometimes. So it took me a while to kind of work up the courage. So I really do admire that. Uh, that's something that I didn't have at the time. So I'm really excited to see it. I like the, I like the MC name too, Young Scala. It's a positive name too. So it's not even trying to, you know, he's not like swaggy swag, Lil. You know, not <laughs> I'm not hating on you guys out there. <laughs> but I, I, I appreciate it. And I definitely checked out a video of his prior because I care about music and right. I want to check out everyone and I saw his name in an article and people were really excited about him and I, and he looked like he was performing at his school and I was like this is amazing if you can get because because we all know how um, it feels to be in school you always feel like you're being judged yeah. you want to fit in you want to you know it's there's a lot of pressure to be popular so someone who can get in front of their peers and put their their skill out there like that and not be afraid of what their classmates who they have to see every day after that yeah. are going to say about it. Yeah. That's that's really brave that to me. That is awesome. Really so, brave. okay, um, just a couple more. One, I want to know, so I work with a lot of different artists around the tri-state area, around this area, this region, period. And a lot of them want to do what you're doing. They want to tour. They want to make it big. What would be some advice that you could actually give to them as far as this is – at least one good thing that I know I did and this is why I'm here today. Yeah, 100%. I think really anybody could do it, especially if I could do it from nowhere because it's not that I had anything really given to me or I had something fall on my lap. Something I say in most interviews and something I'm just constantly preaching is do not wait to be discovered. Discover yourself because I think one of the biggest excuses that artists make is, oh, well, you know, I, I'm waiting for something to be right or I'm waiting for the planets to align or I need this to happen or if only I had this or if only I had that. And it's kind of like you got to work for it and make it, make it work, you know. Uh, if you don't have something you got to figure out how to make it work so that's just always what I've done if I didn't know how to build websites or make graphics or whatever I was l uh, you know looking on Google or watching YouTube videos or whatever I needed if I couldn't afford to do it I was looking how to do it myself you know I was I was figuring out how to do it I've directed a lot of my videos my own videos I've storyboarded it I've done you know a ton of things that it's because I couldn't afford to bring some big wig in so I was like okay we got to figure out how to do this ourselves so that's really you know the advice I could give to them if they want it bad enough and if they have the passion for it uh, learn how to do a lot of different things because that way too uh, 
you'll have creative control of all your stuff and uh, you know what your fans want the most and you know what you, you want your image to be the most and your brand to be. So why not be the one doing it? I dig it. Okay. Um, I s okay. So that's great and all. Um, why don't we just end off with um, you talking to the audience, letting them know, you know, where to find all your information, your music, you know, where to go and whatever else you just want to tell them real quick before we yeah. sign off. Is it is it like really conceited to be like Google me? <laughs> Not just at all. Google me. No, there's Not just so many sites. There's so many sites. If I go through them all, Snapchat, you know, Instagram. I'm I'm on pretty much all the major social networking sites: Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, Periscope, all that stuff going on. And we Periscope live from a lot of shows too. So if anyone, if you don't have a show near you, you can uh, watch us streaming live for most of them. Uh, so make sure you log on. And also I represent a uh, movement called Team Underdog. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's kind of a, a thing I'm always shouting out and representing because I do this for the underdogs in the industry. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm still an independent artist against the big machine. So we're still, still very much an underdog. So shout out to everyone who feels like an underdog out there for sure. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Whitney. I'm so glad to have you on stage, and we're doing this interview at Basement Transmissions. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out to even talk with me and, cool. and just giving us some feedback. We really appreciate you. Thank and you very much. I look forward to seeing you perform on stage and seeing the energy that you bring to the crowd. I think this is going to be an amazing show. Me too. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see you guys there, hopefully. All right, guys. Thank you so much. This is Lamore Vielle, the goddess of love, and I am signing out with Whitney Payton. You guys have a wonderful evening, day, and I'm I will talk to you soon. Bye. I like it. Okay. I'm still talking to the mic.
It's at a time like this that you have to ask yourself, is this the end of the show? Or the end of humanity? Only time will tell. I'm your host, Bobby J. Thanks for tuning in to BTTV. And until next time, have a good night.